All right, welcome everyone. Um, we welcome you officially to this Rural Life Virtual Summer Institute session. This session will focus on understanding the middle school student. My name is Patricia Hilliard and I am your session host. I am here to support the presenter, who is Christy Snyder, um, and offer any other technical assistance. And also I will be monitoring the chat. Um, at the end, uh, John will share an evaluation link with you that um, will give you more information about your certificate. Also, we really highly encourage you to share any questions, suggestions, or clarifications that you have in the chat. Again, I will be monitoring that as closely as possible and bringing up any questions directly to our presenter. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to your session presenter and facilitator, Christy Snyder. Yay. All right, welcome again, guys. Um, we're so glad that you joined us today for understanding the middle school student. And before we get started, I'd like to talk with you just a minute about Zoom. Um, some of us are familiar with Zoom, probably more so than you ever thought you were going to be. Um, but in case you're fairly new to Zoom, let's talk about um, a couple of tools. First of all, along the bottom of your excuse me, toolbar, um, you'll see your video and microphone options. We would love to see your faces. I know it's awkward, um, but being able to see you helps to warm up what is otherwise a pretty sterile environment. So if you haven't started your video, I would encourage you to do that now. Also, your microphone can be muted or not. To keep the um, background noise at a minimum, we ask that you keep yourself muted unless, of course, you're, you're sharing a comment or asking a question. And speaking of questions and comments, you'll notice that little chat um, bubble in your toolbar. Um, please feel free to um, click that. It will open up a little chat pane to the side and you can ask questions and make comments um, using that chat feature at any time during the presentation. Also, when I share my screen, it use, usually forces you into full screen mode. If that's not working for you, you can just hit the escape button on your computer um, and that will exit you out of that full screen mode. Also, feel free to minimize or expand your participant window in whatever way works best for you. And one last thing before we get started, I need you to please add your grade level to your name window. And you can do this by hovering over your and these um, three little dots will appear in the upper right hand corner. If you click that, it will give you the option to rename. Um, please keep your name. Just simply add your grade level before it. And it's real important that that number come before your name. That's gonna help, it, help, um, help make it a lot easier for John to place you in the appropriate breakout room. Thank you for doing this. All right, so here's how our hour together will go. We'll start with an introductory activity that I'm calling Why Middle School. Then we'll explore um, an article called This We Believe, and that's the foundational article for the rest of our session. And after that, we'll dive deeper into a couple of the ideas from the article, uh, complete an activity in which I ask you to be a detective, and then finish our session with some reflection, evaluation, and certificates. So here we go. To activate your thinking, I'd like to ask you to think about what made you want to teach middle school. And then I'd like for you to take that one step further. What are some challenges in teaching middle school that you did not expect? Please share those responses in the chat or you can unmute if you would like as well.
Trisha, I'm relying on you. I can't see the chat window. Um, so far we have dealing with hormones. Yeah. Can you repeat the question one more time? Sure. What are some challenges that, uh, in teaching middle school that you didn't expect when you set out on this journey? We've got um, attitudes and drama from Mindy. Absolutely. Laura okay. says uh, parent participation. Oh, they're flying in right now. Um, middle school age is probably my favorite just due to the uniqueness of the kids. They are going through so many changes, hormones and attitudes. Um, unexpected challenge what that was that they didn't seem to fit in anywhere. That's from an eighth grade teacher. Yeah. Again, with maturity levels, attitude and a couple last ones. Um, from Wendy, I didn't expect there to be so many needs. Parents, parents. Yeah, yeah. So teaching middle school is quite challenging. <laughs> <laughs> um, students enter middle school at age, you know, 10 or 11, and they leave roughly at 14, having kind of morphed into sometimes a completely different person. Relationships with um, teachers and parents and peers are often challenging for them because of all these hormones, like you mentioned, and um, even the need to assert their independence to kind of start that. The emotional, social, physical, and cognitive growth in middle school age children is rapid, and I would argue that it's even fragile. It requires yeah. a lot of compassion, empathy and even a really good sense of humor to navigate. So kudos to you for taking on such a challenging yet deeply rewarding teaching assignment. Just like you, Rural Life has their own reasons for focusing their grant on middle school and those reasons are based uh, in, on solid research. Did you know that almost 7,000 students drop out of high schools in the United States every single day. And many of these students do so because they lack the necessary literacy skills to be successful in high school. So an I3 Naswanger project um, completed in the past uh, where 27,000 high school students were served recommended that um, an additional focus on improving literacy in middle grades um, in hopes of preventing high school dropouts be done since literacy is a major barrier to graduation. And research on students who drop out shows that academic performance in both middle and elementary school can often predict whether students will drop out or graduate from high school. So based on this information, we know that early intervention is necessary. Research also shows us that sixth graders who have even one of these four indicators have a 75% possibility of not finishing high school. And that's either an F in mathematics or English, attendance below 80% for the year, or a final unsatisfactory behavior mark in even one class. So uh, that staggers me every time I hear that, but the good news is that each of these four indicators are easily identified and they can be supported and remedied before students ever get to high school. Um, because middle school is a critically decisive time in academic development, we know that middle grades, um, adolescence experience in middle school can really be a turning point in his or her life trajectory. So this is the reason Naswanger um, chose to focus the Rural Life Grant on middle school. All right, so how well do you take what you know about middle school from your own personal experience, consider what research says about middle grades education 
and apply that in your own classroom? Or are you so busy with the day-to-day -day requirements of teaching that this isn't something that you even consider? Well, today you're gonna to have the opportunity to do that. We're gonna explore how the overall middle school experience can be better designed to fit the truly unique needs of young adolescents in a way that not only minimizes the risks of disengagement, but also maximizes the opportunity of self-discovery during this pivotal time. We will dive deeper into posits that say education for young adolescents should have four central attributes. It should be de developmentally responsive, challenging, empowering, and equitable. So next, we're gonna dive into this article from AMLE called This We Believe. Um, AMLE is the Association of Middle Level Education. If you're not familiar with them, I highly recommend that you check out their website. It's full of wonderful resources for middle grades teachers. You're gonna be able to access this article a couple of different ways. You can either use the bit.ly link highlighted on the slide, um, you'll have to just type that into a device, or you may use the link that Trisha has dropped, I think, into the chat. Use whichever one works better for you. I'm gonna give you eight minutes to read the article and reflect. We're not doing this in breakout rooms, John, just, they're just staying right here for now. Um, to focus your reflection, I'd like for you to consider these three questions. What connection can you make between a new idea from the article and your prior knowledge? What new ideas did you get from the article that extended or pushed your thinking in new directions? And what is challenging or confusing for you about the article? Uh, if you want to, you can snap a picture of this slide uh, to make sure that you have these questions handy as you go through the article. Please be prepared to share your reflections with the group when, um, after these eight minutes, and you may access the article and start reading now.
really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Tried to catch it before it actually went off. All right, so thank you for reading and reflecting. Would some brave soul like to volunteer um, either by unmuting or sharing in the chat um, what, you know, how you reflected on this article? While we wait for a brave soul to unmute or continue to share, we had a couple of responses that came in before the alarm went off. One um, from the vice principal, Kristen Davenport, talked about at the heart of being a middle school educator is relationships. Um, no argument there. Um, uh, Gerilyn talked about they learn best by doing and not sitting. Um, the idea of using the scientific method in a different way, letting students structure their own ideas instead of coming to class or coming with a set of rules. Um, yes, the only way I, I really like this comment from, I guess, an art teacher uh, is the only way to um, establish that classroom management is through relationships. Did we lose Patricia? That's what I'm trying to figure out, Christy. Or did, uh, or did you lose me? I'm not sure. No, you're here. Okay, I'm here. All right, well, I, I really liked um, those comments that Patricia shared. Um, you know, one of the posits of this article is that it should be, um, education should be challenging. And um, it's really, one way to do that is through inquiry-based learning. And I think with science, we, we typically think of science being that way, but when we try to apply that um, to other subject areas, um, it is a little more challenging maybe. So see that. Hey, Christy, I'll add something that I was reflecting on. Um, I love on, uh, I guess, posit two, where it says adolescent development is not accomplished alone. It is supported by the structure of the learning environment and by the educators who have knowledge to share. Um, and I just reflect, on the fact that sometimes we look at, at these 11 and 12, 13, 14 year olds, even when I was a high school administrator, I would you know, think about when I mean, they're kids and it's like part of our job is to one, you know, of course provide an education, but also remember that they're kids and they're learning how to do all the things that we expect them to do. Um, and so you know, any way that we can support that growth and development um, is so important. I agree, thank you, Bethany. All right, well, let's um, move a little deeper into um, one of these posits, and that is that education should be more challenging. In the um, This We Believe article, the case that education should be challenging um, through the use of active learning is made. And lots of times when I go in middle school classrooms over these past two years, um, I've observed students doing lots of things. Sometimes they may be reciting their objective case pronouns or um, five freedoms protected in the um, First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Might be multiplying numbers in scientific notation. Um, you know, lots of times I see them, they'll, they know the differences between connotation and denotation and even the differences among genes and alleles and chromosomes. But these are curriculum um, elements that have been explained from the front of the room um, or about which students have read or viewed media. And most students record that information in their notebooks or maybe in their personal technology. Um, they quiz themselves on it right before the test and then they echo it back to you um, on the unit test. And because we're so pressed for time as teachers, um, we, you know, to cover all our standards, we count this as successful learning and we move on to the next unit. But is this successful learning? I would argue that it's not. Um, in, in each of those examples I shared, Learners were passive consumers, not active creators. 
So let's watch this video um, to learn more about what active learning is. When I think of active learning, I think of students co-constructing knowledge with me in some way. Um, that could be a project, it could be around a discussion, it could be a fishbowl. When I see a classroom where students are talking more to each other than listening to the professor, that to me is active learning. Active learning involves creating and constructing artifacts, such as a drawing or a painting or a, a sculpture. If you're in a performing arts, active learning is a performance. I get to be creative here, and I get to develop new things and new activities, and even things with real life like paper and scissors, and having students construct and build and perform. Active learning is as much figuring out what the questions are as it is figuring out what the answers to those questions are. In fact, the questions are far more important than the answers. Choosing meaningful activities or questions is at the heart of what makes active learning effective. We need to ask them questions that offer opportunities for meaningful thinking. Active learning is the only thing I do these days. I, have, I don't lecture if I can help it. When I think back to my college experience, the only courses I remember are the very few that I had that incorporated active learning. Looking back 10 or 15 years later, I'm thinking, I wish I'd had more of that. All right, so now I'd like to give you the opportunity to reflect on this video by answering um, some questions in breakout groups. And you've been assigned to breakout groups by grade level for a reason. I want you to consider the unique needs of students in your grade when you answer these three questions. And I'm gonna give you three minutes to um, discuss your responses with your group. Please select a spokesperson from your group to share when you return to the main room. And you may also want to snap a picture of these questions just so that you'll have them when you get to your breakout room. So I'll give you just a second to do that. Everybody got their picture? All right, we will see you in about three minutes. And John will send you an invitation to your breakout room. You just have to accept that. And that has been sent, Christy, so they should just be able to accept it and go right on in. All right, thank you, John. You're welcome. Is Trisha back? She's she working her way me. back, she said. Okay. Yeah, she texted me and said her computer was doing something strange and making a restart. <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, restart a computer, who knows? We've got one, two, three, four, five who haven't renamed. That usually means they've just got their computer on and they're not actually there. That's what that really usually means. Guys, okay, here comes Patricia. <clears throat> Your name, John Scott. You may have to rename yourself. We have several John Scotts, which just happens when you come on through the website, which is fine. There's a little set of blue, uh, a little box with three white dots and a blue button over your, your little video square where you can rename yourself. Right. Just mouse over your video square and click that. I've got instructions in the chat as well Thank on how to do that. Christy, I'm back. I had some technical issues. All right. Glad you're back, Tricia. See, I told you we shouldn't have talked about that earlier. <laughs> I wasn't even going to say it again. Yeah, you did. <laughs> okay, Robin's gone. Judy Music is gone. That's excellent. Now, Christy, if you want to jump between rooms, I can make you the host temporarily. 
John, I, I honestly just want Let to see their thing. <laughs> my internet okay. is going to keep me up right now. All right. We're going to leave it alone then. I am on my phone hotspot right now. Okay. Thank God they gave me a ton of extra data. Yeah. So, so I'm not using my video for that reason. Understood. They'll go two more times to these breakout rooms after this. We'll give Lynn eighth. And this one sixth. And that one sixth. Now we know who the people are. Christy, you're in your first breakout, slide 17, I guess. Um, no, 14. 14. Okay. Okay. Now, it, when, when I close them, it takes one minute. So you just tell me when. Oh, go ahead and close them. Okay. They'll be back in one minute, if not sooner. Okay. Because it pops up in a little box and says you can leave it, or if you just wait in one minute, everybody comes back. They just go right back. I think that's been about a minute, John. Nine seconds left. Okay. Is that five, four, three, two, one. They will start reappearing now. Okay. And then I, I wasn't paying as much attention to the video because I didn't hear I was supposed to pay attention. <laughs> uh. All right, hopefully most of you or all of you are back. Um, I ask that you assign a spokesperson from your group. So if those people could unmute or you're welcome to share in the chat, whatever's easier for you. Um, but we would like to hear your reflections. Um, and sixth grade, I'm gonna let you go first. We have a sixth grade spokesperson. I was in, this is Kristen Davenport, I was in uh, that group and we basically talked about um, the struggles that uh, the middle school kids go through at this age, not wanting to, I guess, be engaged in the work and uh, basically being spoon fed was the, the catchphrase, you know, from elementary school to middle school. And I think reflecting back to the video, um, questioning it's probably in, in relationships, questioning is, is our main source of just drawing those kids in to want to participate and um, be engaged. Hey, thank you, thank you. Seventh grade. Seventh grade, we talked a lot about how difficult it is to find the time in the curriculum to have a lot of meaningful discussion and to allow students to work um, at their own pace or to kind of explore things just because there's a new standard every day um, to cover. Okay. Did you um, discuss maybe any um, workarounds for that in your group? I guess what I'm wondering is, do you think it might um, help you save time in other areas if you actually let these kids, um, you know, be social? I, I see lots of teachers dealing with behavior issues. Kids are talking anyway. 
you know, um, maybe if you took the time to kind of focus the, their discussion um, on your standard, maybe that might be helpful. All right, thank you for sharing eighth grade. You see me? I can't see y'all anymore. Yes, I can see you. Okay. Um, we discussed um, that you know whenever the kids get to break up and work with each other, they love doing that. But we're not actually, you know, sometimes they don't work like you're like they're supposed to. They are talking about the ball game. They're talking about other things, and trying to basically direct their conversations to be meaningful um, conversations that actually enhance the classroom. And that's kind of a concern that we're not always sure we jump past. Yeah. I see teachers um, who are most successful with that have taken time maybe at the beginning of the year to kind of teach um, a protocol, you know, account, how do you actually do accountable talk and that kind of thing. And uh, that seems to work really well. All right. Thank you for sharing. And Christy, we had another um, one from uh, Kristen Davenport about how one of the nice longer coaches this past year implemented the Socratic seminar. So that goes back to your structure, structuring their conversation with the sixth grade social study students and they really enjoyed it. Oh yeah, it's amazing. It really is. Kids want to talk. They want to be actively engaged and um, that's a, a wonderful instructional strategy. All right, let's move forward. Um, we're gonna look more closely at a second posit of that article education should be empowering. So one of the most powerful ways to impact achievement positively is to actively engage students in the life of the classroom. And although we as educators know that student contribution um, is vital to the learning process, you may be surprised to learn that research shows many times middle grade students feel almost like a nuisance or just really awkward when making contributions in a traditional type classroom. This most likely stems from their uncertainty with respect to self-confidence or peer relationships and independence. And as teachers, we have the capacity to change our classroom's culture and our students' experiences if we design lessons that prioritize student voice and participation. And this helps to counteract their uncertainty and really empowers them. Elevating student voice is critical um, for other reasons. Douglas Fisher and Nancy Fry say the amount of talk that students do is directly correlated with their achievement. There are strategies that teachers can use to elevate student voice um, in order to strengthen relationships. We were talking about um, foster a sense of belonging, increase engagement, and inform instruction. So let's watch this video and see which of these strategies you can identify. So you're actually watching for a purpose. You're trying to identify these strategies that teach, the teacher is using to elevate student voice. Today I tried something new. What I wanted to do was teach stop motion animation. And I had this down to a science, or so I thought. See, I like to use odds and ends that students can use at their home. But this time, instead of telling them how to do it, I decided to just give them all of the junk all these things that I've used in the past or have never used and I said here now you figure out how to use these the objective is to have your iPad on top and it's going to be recording the setting down below go ahead go do it once a group had a solution then I asked them to let me know and then the whole class came over and we talked about the solution that they came up with um, we talked about the pros and the cons and the students all watched and learned and participated in the conversation. Does it fit the whole thing? Yeah. What's, what, is there any pros to this solution? Yeah. What, what's working? Uh, well, you can see the whole thing and we can like get under there well. Okay. And is there any cons, something we need to try to improve on? 
Anyone else see some any cons, anything that we need to improve on? Is this a pretty good solution? Yeah. yeah. Does anyone else have another solution? Okay, lead us. Well, we, we changed the boxes and we kept the, the locker thing. We To hold it down, we just put two cream boxes on it. So way more. So okay. Sturdy. So you're making it sturdy by adding the crayon boxes on the side. Yes. What's working? What's I mean, that's a good solution right there, a good pro. What's Is there any other pros why you would tell people to do it this way? You can see more of it because in the first, we could only see it's higher up. kind of like in front of it, and it's higher up, so the iPad doesn't turn anyway. Okay, are you running into any problems right now? Do you guys see any problems? Are all of us going to be, is the whole group going to be able to work on this and move it around on the stop motion animation? Oh, no. No. Okay, so there might be a slight problem, maybe a location problem that we have to do here. Anyone else? Holy buckets was this a blast. Now, I didn't anticipate letting the students do this, but I ended up with a shorter hour because of other activities in the school. And so I thought, you know, today's a wash anyways, let's just see what they can do. It was so motivating for these kids. They felt empowered. They felt like they had choice in the way that they developed their stop motion animation. They worked as teams. They listened to each other. They created. This is totally worth the time and the effort of the students to run their own education. If there was extra time, students just worked on their stop motion, just kind of practicing so that they could come into class next time and be prepared to actually record their videos. Do you hear all the noise in the classroom? That's the sound of learning, and it's music to my ears. Okay, so what strategies um, did you notice that um, use student voice to strengthen relationships? And you can unmute or share in the chat. I can't see the chat. Trisha, can you? Yeah, I was just, we're just giving them think time. A couple okay. of responses just came in. Great. They had an, an objective in mind. Um, they were naming the pros and the cons. Uh, definitely questioning teamwork and creativity. The teacher kept asking questions. Again, back to the pros and the cons. And cons felt like they had voice. They solved a problem. It was evident that all voices, in fact, were um, valued, again, with the pros and cons. Yeah, I like that, Mindy. They were working as one, and it felt comfortable to share. So especially with the younger ones, they felt comfortable enough to share, even if it wasn't the greatest idea. I added that on. Um, Sarah, fun and educational. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I think definitely the teamwork when she, you know, she broke them, had to work in teams mm -hmm. to accomplish this. Um, definitely that helps to um, strengthen relationships, foster a sense of belonging, um, and getting to do it themselves, not just being told every, um, every step of the way what to do. Uh, that definitely is inquiry based and increases their engagement. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you the opportunity to reflect a little more deeply on the video by answering um, these questions in your breakout groups. And just like before, I'm going to give you three minutes to discuss your responses. Um, 
Again, please answer these questions from you know, the perspective of your grade levels and uh, please select a spokesperson from your group to share when you return. Uh, if you don't still have your picture of these questions, please snap a picture now. They are the same that you used before. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in three minutes, as long as John's ready. Are you ready, John? And they're off. All right, thank you. Okay. And um, Christy, there was a question from Miranda. She is the art teacher. Mm. She asked a really good question that'll give you three minutes to think about it. And how can we implement group work with social distancing? Yep. Oh. That's a good question. I don't know. You have two and a half minutes. Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can think of, I mean, I, I think it's more about choosing a platform that you think works for you and your students. That's probably a good first step. If you're already in Canvas, what platforms are there? If you're already used to being on Zoom, how can you, you know, use that in such a, a way that really fosters, um, you know, productive group work, not just group work for the sake of saying you're getting people together, you know. Um, and also the use of roles. Yeah. So they all might be um, contributing equally, but through a, through a different role. Like somebody, you know, I don't know what the project is. Someone could be the poet, someone could be the artist, someone could be the business person. So there's another way that they can contribute by having different roles. Ooh, and I would also um, incorporate some type of like shared responsibility in terms of like a product that's created. And there's lots of collaborative like even the google doc you know where everybody is able to contribute at the same time or you're um you know some type of if it's if the intent of the activity is to create something and how do you ensure that kind of everybody's done their part not in a not in a punitive way necessarily but just accountability and ownership you know that everybody's kind of involved um, and some of those things may be similar to what teachers were doing anyway you know in their classrooms um, and some may be new <coughs> new uh, things to explore for some folks. I know I was in Gina's session where she was showing a couple apps that felt very um, tied to something you might do in art and there were collaboration features, you know, where more than one person could be, uh, you know, adding to um, the creation at one time. So I just think that's kind of cool. In, in the digital world they were doing that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's links to her uh, materials on our website, Christy. Okay. Um, she had a ton of resources. Yeah, all and of it was free. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're coming back. Okay. They still have 49 seconds, but that's okay. Okay, 30 seconds. All right, I'm gonna have to hurry. <laughs> 15. Five. and they should all be coming back. And here they come. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, for a second time, I'm just gonna kind of pare this down. Um, I'd like to hear your reflections. Seventh grade, if you would share your reflection from question number one, what connection can you make between a new idea from the video and your prior knowledge? Judy Music, please do that. I guess what I would say on that one is, um, I, I would look at it from the standpoint of, of saying, what, what standard am I teaching? How can I integrate 
technology, if possible, into that standard, and then um, present it as some type of look at the present kind of, some kind of problem um, to be solved. And how can I use technology to solve that problem along with the standard that I'm trying to solve? Like that, yeah. Eighth grade, question two. What new ideas did you get that extended or pushed your thinking in new directions? Anybody from eighth grade? Mm. Okay. This is Lynn. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I'm I'm on my iPhone six trying to make this work today. <laughs> it's all right. Um, you know, I would think that uh, I think it's okay to to try new things. I know for me, I I tend to stick with what I know that works for me, um, and uh, just um, I'm comfortable with that. But I'm trying to to learn more after 22 years in the classroom uh, that it's okay to change and try new things. And to be honest, just kind of let the kids lead, you know, as long as they stay on track and on target, letting the kids lead the, lead the learning. I think they definitely get more from that. Absolutely. Yeah. And some, some guidelines from you, but yes, definitely. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. All right, sixth grade. Question number three, what's challenging or confusing for you about this? I think that we discussed, not really that it was confusing, um, but the challenge of creating something that we saw in the video into a social distancing component. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, we were talking while y'all were in your breakout rooms about um, maybe different platforms like um, Canvas or Google Classrooms, making that a little easier for you to do, but um, definitely that's a challenge. Another right. challenge from sixth grade was time limits. It came in through the chat. Yes, thank you. Speaking of time limits, I'm running short on time, so I'm gonna jet to this next slide. Um, I'm gonna, Many times on the surface, things appear one way, but um, when we view what's happening through the lens of research, often something very different is happening below the surface. That's all these icebergs in this presentation. Um, in just a minute, I'm going to ask you to be a detective and analyze a scenario back in your breakout rooms. You're going to be sniffing out clues that give evidence of whether or not the teacher in the scenario is implementing the vision of education being developmentally responsive, uh, challenging, empowering, and equitable. I chose an ELA scenario because the Rural Life Grants focus is literacy, but keep in mind that you don't have to have a background in ELA um, or to be successful with this task. We've provided a couple of ways for you to access this scenario. You can type the bit.ly link into any device or Tricia is dropping a link in the chat for you. Um, I'm gonna give you four minutes to read the scenario and answer the reflection questions, which are also found on that same scenario page. Um, and when John sends you your invitation, you can go to your breakout rooms and access the scenario now. Okay, Christy, they're on the way. Thank you. Christy, I'm glad I am having the technical issues and not you today. I've been texting Bethany. 
Yeah. Back on my hot spot again. My internet went out right when you started explaining that. Oh, goodness. I'm so sorry, Tricia. I was about in tears yesterday because of <laughs> that happening to me. It's awful. I'm glad it's happening to me and that I'm just, and Verizon gave me so much extra data. Mm -hmm. I sent the link, I broadcasted it to all the rooms, Christy, as well, okay? Oh, I didn't even you know. You, you have the ability to do that. You can broadcast messages into the rooms. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank uh, you. Yeah, because they lose access to this chat when they yeah. go into their breakouts. So if they don't have it written down, didn't take a picture, that's right, the, the link is gone at that point, yeah. So they've got the bit.ly in there now. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. I'm so sad. Yeah. And John, you share that link in the, the evaluation, right? That's what you've been doing. Uh, yes, ma'am. I will do that, Trisha. Yeah, okay. no problem. Let me get that copied and pasted right now and get it ready to go. And I need to turn that on. I guess I'm going to have to forego hearing the reflections right here or I won't finish. So, yeah. John, can you put me in a room? Uh, yeah, which one do you want to go into? Surprise me. Okay, let's go sixth grade, okay? All right. All right, let's see. Assign to grade six. There you go. Christy, I wonder if you could do some, you know, some just all call share out on any of the three questions, just to, okay. to copy, any copy. kind of response. And people will add stuff to the chat. Yeah. Okay. I think they're pretty, most people have been to at least one other session, so they kind of know how the evaluation works. We could okay. set that right on, you know, right at two o'clock. So we don't yeah. have to worry about that or okay. I'll give you a couple minutes. I really wanted to do the futureme.org too, but I may not have time to do that, so. That's right, just stick it in your back pocket for a future <laughs> session. Christy, I'm going to close the rooms now. Okay, thank so you. They'll be right there. Whenever your timer goes off, it should end. Okay. Four minutes goes by just like that. Mm -hmm. An hour this time has. Now, yesterday, an hour felt like an eternity. <laughs> Ten days. But today, it's gone by really quickly. <laughs> Uma. <laughs> Thirty seconds. Christy, maybe ask for one or two volunteers because I th my room didn't have time to share. Right. They were still reading. Oh. Really, it was short. <laughs> <laughs> reading and processing. Gotcha. They're all coming back now. All right. <laughs> all right welcome back. Um, for sake of time, could just maybe somebody, a couple of people volunteer um, to share your thoughts? Eighth grade just basically talked about having time management issues in her classroom and maybe thought about getting them more into groups and discussing, like summarizing chapter 12 is in one group, chapter 13 is the other group, chapter 14 is the other group, and then the kids can share what their ideas are about the book. She just seemed to have maybe a time management issue in her classroom. Okay. Anybody else? For sixth grade, I was saying that uh, she could help the students to dive more into their discussion and their talk time um, after that turn and talk kind of moment in her lesson instead of just getting them back on task on to another activity have more of an in-depth conversation with some prompting like guiding questions yeah i love that idea so turn and talks are not supposed to be for just one word answer questions right they're really meant to get students to um, dive in more deeply um, to a text and um, kind of teach each other not just answer one word questions so that's definitely 
a weakness for her in this scenario. And there are others, I really wish we had more time to dive into this um, a whole lot deeper, but we are out of time. Um, please remember that you can find our session materials. They're posted on the Virtual Summer Institute website along with a recording of today's session. And Tricia, if you're here, <laughs> I'll turn this back over to you for just a minute. <laughs> yes, I am still here on Yay. my own hot spot, of course. <laughs> um, John just uh, placed the link in the chat for the evaluation. Um, it will not take you long at all to complete that evaluation, but your thoughts and your reflections are extremely important to the um, reflection and improvement upon any session. So please um, take your time in completing that. And on behalf of Christy and myself, we thank you so much for attending. Um, please feel free to hang around if you have any other questions or suggestions or comments that you wanted to vocalize and you weren't able to do it. Um, so thank you and have a great afternoon. Thank you all. Yes, and I'll leave the meeting open for a couple more minutes so everybody has a chance to click on the link and complete the evaluation form if you would, please, especially if you want uh, credit for today's course. Thank you.